Hi, I'm Nick. Today we're going to be brewing beer. We have a German Oktoberfest. We're going to go through the simple steps of making beer. First, start it off by sanitizing anything. You can start with just any plain bleach. Splash a couple tablespoons into your big vessel. Then you just mix everything around in there. Make sure it's all clean. Then just rinse it off. The most important part of brewing beer is making sure everything's clean. This is a long process and a little bit of bacteria at the beginning compounds as it goes on. So these are our ingredients. It all comes in a kit. We have malt, hops, malt extract, more bittering hops, and then we have yeast for the end. We're going to start by taking two and a half gallons of water and heating it up. An important part of the brewing process is choosing what water you like. A lot of people say you need a certain type of water. What we found out is use the water that you drink the most. The first time we tried brewing, we used distilled water. The beer came out fine. The next time we just tried our tap water, the water that we drink here, and it came out just as good. So use whatever water you find best. We're going to take our stockinette and we're going to put our grain in there. And this grain is going to soak in the boiled water. You want to make sure when using the stockinette, just leaving the grain into steep. You don't want to squeeze the bag because that will put too much flavor and will kind of give a sour taste to the beer. You want to leave it in there and just let it steep itself and then pull it out and let the grains drain off. Just make a tie at the top and it works similar to a tea bag. Now we want to bring our water up to 160 degrees, that's the optimal temperature for having the grain soak. So we've been heating up the water now, now we're going to let them soak for 20 minutes. So we've been watching our wort cook carefully, keeping the temperature at 160 degrees. Now we're going to take out our grains. Now like I said earlier, you're just going to pull it out and let kind of the residue fall off. Okay. So we're going to let that drain and then we're going to Crank up the temperature, we want to bring it back up to a boil now. Okay, so next we're going to add dry malt extract and then our liquid malt. One important thing with the liquid malt, it's very thick and unless you get it warmed up in a, um, a container of hot water, it will be very hard to get all of the malt out. And so this way it loosens it up, it gets it out of your canned container much easier. Our wort is boiling and starting to smell really good. Now we're going to add our dried malt extract. With a dried malt extract, you want to add it pretty quickly, otherwise it will clump up in the bag and you won't be able to get it actually into the wort. So you pour that in there. Give it a quick stir. Then we want to add right after that our liquid malt extract. And that, scrape out the extras. This is what's going to give the real flavor to the beer. So now that we've added our malt, we're going to add our bittering hops. We're going to add two types of hops. We're going to add our bittering hops now, and those are going to give the nice bitter flavor to the beer that's going to kind of stay through the finish. Then later on, we're going to add the flavoring hops. And that's going to be that final little spurt that you get. Alright, we're going to stir in our malt and our bittering hops. We're going to make sure that's nice and stirred together, then we're going to boil for 40 minutes. Now is when it's going to start smelling really so good. Now we're on our final step. We're going to add the flavoring hops. Our beer already smells really good. The first hops we gave, we're going to give a really good base flavor. Now this is going to be the punch that we get at the beginning of the beer. So we're going to stir these in. They're going to melt right in. And we're going to let it boil for another 20 minutes. So now it's time to cool the wort. Usually need about two 10 pound bags of ice to be, have enough. Fill up the sink with ice, put some water in there, and then you put the wort into that mixture. 
you want it to cool down to about 60 degrees. So it'll be the optimal temperature for us then to move it into our glass carboy. Next, we're going to move our wort into our carboy. We already put one gallon of just straight tap water in there. Then we're going to add the wort. After we add the wort, we're going to add another gallon and a half of water and see where we're at. We want to have a total of five gallons in our carboy. The next step in the process is adding the yeast. To prepare the yeast, you take lukewarm water, add it to whatever vessel you'd like, then put the yeast on top. You want to let it soak for 10 minutes, so it lets the yeast really activate. And then we're going to add our final step. We're just going to pour our uh, yeast right into the wort. Okay. And we're going to sit this for two weeks to let it ferment. So this is the fermentation stage. In about 24 to 48 hours, we're going to start seeing the pressure chamber bubble. That's going to tell us that the yeast is starting to activate the end of the week it should start slowing down. When the pressure stops fluctuating, then we know we can be ready to bottle. We're now one we'll week it. after bottling our beer, and as you see our beer stopped bubbling, so it's done fermenting, so now we're on to the bottling. So we're going to take off carboy top. In a separate pot we're going to heat up our priming sugar in about a cup of water, and you're just going to let it dissolve, and once it's dissolved you can turn off the heat. What you want to do next, we want to siphon the beer from our carboy into our secondary fermenting bucket. Do that by placing one, the black end of the siphon. So now it's time to bottle. We cleaned our bottles. What we did was we used um, some lukewarm bleach water, rinsed the bottles in the bleach water, and then rinsed them very thoroughly with regular tap water to get any bleach out. So now that we have these sterilized, we can bottle them. We have a tube, functioning tube here, and what it has is a little lever at the bottom, and it hits the bottom of the beer bottle, and when it hits, it will fill up the beer bottle, and when you let go, it will stop filling. So that way we don't have to keep on twisting and untwisting this lever. Using this kind of funnel gets rid of the problem of having um, too much air hit the beer so it doesn't bubble when it hits the bottom. So once the beer is at the top, pull down, you'll have a nice height from the top of the beer bottle. Next, we want to take our capper, simple capper. There's two ways of putting the cap on the beer bottle. You can either put the cap on the capper and then put it on the beer bottle. But what I found is, found is easier is putting the cap on the beer bottle, then placing the capper on, apply equal pressure on both sides, and simply push down so you get a firm feeling on the cap. Now your bottle is ready to sit, and in about two to three weeks we will have our Oktoberfest. We're all bottled. Two to three weeks, we have two cases of home-brewed beer. Thanks for watching. Check back for more videos.